Now, the Star Wars franchise is such an epic, towering IP that it can't possibly please everybody all of the time. There are so many cooks in the kitchen working with so many characters that fans are inevitably going to get rubbed up the wrong way sooner or later. And that is certainly true in the case of these 10 bizarro Star Wars decisions. Whether baffling from a pure creative standpoint or because they don't make any sense at all, from a pure character perspective, all of these manage to piss fans off or at least confuse them in the worst ways possible. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 weirdest decisions in Star Wars history. Number 10. Leia hugs Rey instead of Chewbacca Though The Force Awakens was largely embraced by fans as a major return to form for the Star Wars franchise, there is one undeniable head-scratcher of a moment late in the film that still irks a lot of people. After Han Solo is killed by his son Kylo Ren, the Resistance fighters return from their attack on Starkiller base to mourn Han's passing, and General Leia is quickly seen embracing Rey. Now, it made no sense to many fans that Leia would immediately hug Rey, somebody that she's never met before, over Han's co-pilot of decades and best pal Chewbacca. More than a cruel slight to Chewie, it just seems like a strange creative oversight, because why wouldn't Leia go directly to Chewbacca over a random person she doesn't know? Even in an interview with Slash Films a few months after the film's release, director J.J. Abrams even admitted that this decision was a mistake, albeit while attempting to explain his thought process for the moment, speaking about how it was a mutual loss and how that was somehow meant to make it slightly better. Number 9. Obi-Wan allows Anakin to escort Padme to Naboo In Attack of the Clones, Anakin is tasked with escorting Padme back to Naboo, where the pair predictably end up falling in love and frolicking around, as is forbidden by the Jedi Code. But the thing is, is that this could have all been prevented had Obi-Wan, who is very clearly aware of Anakin's feelings for Padme per their interactions earlier on in the film, just said no. Why did Obi-Wan say nothing when the Jedi Council gave Anakin his mission? He could have either had somebody else assigned to Padme, or or, better yet, gone with the pair himself and acted as a chaperone of sorts. Ultimately, of course, the creative rationale for this lies in George Lucas needing to get Anakin and Padme together romantically eventually, in order to set the entire future events of the franchise in motion. Even so, it's an odd decision on Obi-Wan's part, being at best a compassionate lapse of judgement to let Anakin have some downtime with Padme, yet ultimately it was downright irresponsible given that Anakin is his Padawan. Number 8. Holdo keeps Poe in the dark Love or hate The Last Jedi, a lot of fans have major misgivings with one plot point late into the movie. That Vice Admiral Holdo keeps mostly everyone, especially Poe Dameron, in the dark about her evacuation plan for the Resistance. As a result of this, a frustrated Poe leads a mutiny believing Holdo to be irresponsible, only for Lair to have to incapacitate him to ensure that he doesn't interfere in Holdo's secret evacuation plan. Now, you can argue that Poe wouldn't have gone along with it anyway, and that Holdo's lack of trust in Poe was basically proven right when he tried to stage the mutiny, but communication is so, so important. All of this discord could have perhaps been nipped in the bud had she just explained her game plan to Poe up front. Ultimately, fans questioned Holdo's decision so much because it felt like the director was straining to generate artificial tension in the script when, honestly, there was already plenty to go around. Number 7. Han lets Greedo shoot first Is there a single Star Wars moment as historically controversial as Han Solo shooting first? In the 1997 special edition of A New Hope, George Lucas decided to re-edit the sequence in which Han shoots the bounty hunter Greedo dead in the cantina. In the original version of the scene, Han of course shoots Greedo dead before Greedo can fire a shot off, immediately solidifying Han as a ruthless, street-smart anti-hero. Yet the special edition saw Lucas soften his stance on Han's personality, having Greedo instead fire a shot at Han first, such that Han only returns fire and kills Greedo in self-defense. Now, Many criticized George Lucas for what they perceived as watering Han's personality down for the sake of younger audiences, not to mention that the revised scene A makes Greedo look like an idiot who can't hit Han at close range, and B shows Han surviving through dumb luck rather than cunning. Given that precisely nobody complained about Han shooting Greedo in the film's original theatrical release, it remains one of the strangest changes Lucas ever made to the original trilogy. Number 6. Finn Never Reveals His Secret now, The Rise of Skywalker is a profoundly strange film from top to bottom, a roughshod, time-constrained production which sloppily sets up countless plot threads that never actually pay off. Perhaps the most egregious of the lot is a recurring gag regarding the secret that Finn was going to reveal to Rey while they were having a close brush with death. Though Poe prods Finn several times to fess up throughout the film, Finn keeps his lips sealed to the very end, and so fans are left to speculate on what he was going to tell her. 
Fans were sharply divided into two camps. Either Finn was going to profess his love for Rey or revealed that he's force sensitive. Thankfully, we didn't have to wait long for the answer as J.J. Abrams revealed days later, after the rise of Skywalker's release, that Finn was indeed going to tell Rey that he was force sensitive. Yet, on a character and a creative level, the fact that we never saw this in the final film was just ridiculous. Perhaps Abrams was hedging his bets on Finn returning for future stories, a prospect that seems decidedly unlikely, or that his ultimate confession got cut from the movie, but either way, leaving fans hanging on this plot point was a baffling choice to say the least. Given that many felt that Finn was done a disservice throughout the entire trilogy, ending this three-movie arc on an anti-climax that the director had to then clarify after the fact is not a good look at all. Number 5. Tarkin Doesn't Evacuate the Death Star in A New Hope's climax, Grand Moff Tarkin makes the mistake to end all mistakes by refusing to evacuate the Death Star when the Rebels begin their assault. When Bast notes the potential danger, Tarkin famously replies, Evacuate! In our moment of triumph, I think you overestimate their chances. As a result, when Luke Skywalker blows up the Death Star, Tarkin is killed along with around 1.5 million other personnel on board the vessel. You can certainly argue that it was entirely within Tarkin's character to be an arrogant blowhard who simply couldn't accept the prospect of the the Death Star being compromised by puny rebels, but even so, his foolhardiness ultimately got the population of a decently sized metropolitan city killed. There's hubris and then there's galaxy brain level delusion that you're untouchable. Congratulations Tarkin, you played yourself. Number 4. Count Dooku Reveals the Truth to Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones, Obi-Wan is captured by the Separatists on Geonosis and Count Dooku decides to pay him a visit in his cell. There, Dooku flippantly reveals that the Republic is now under the control of the Sith Lord Darth Sidious because of reasons. In classic Bond villain fashion, Dooku needlessly hands over game-changing information to an opposition figure, which on the face of it seems an incredibly risky and foolish thing to do. Sure, Dooku had ulterior motives here to try and sow discord between the Jedi and the Senate, and perhaps even test Obi-Wan's faith to the light side, but on the balance of probabilities, it was definitely a huge gamble to reveal the identity of the main man behind the curtain to a damn Jedi master of all people. Number 3. The Empire Builds a Second Death Star Return of the Jedi's big hook is that the Empire is in the middle of building a second Death Star in order to take out all the Rebels once and for all. Though the Empire did at least make the second Death Star larger and removed some of the original's flaws, it was still susceptible to intrusion, enough so that Lando and Wedge were able to destroy its main reactor at the end. Both narratively and in terms of the Empire's own logic, it's an odd choice to build a new superweapon that's just a beefed up version of the original, albeit with many of the same structural weaknesses. Ever since Return of the Jedi, Jedi's release, many fans have dubbed Death Star 2 a feat of lazy writing. That maybe George Lucas and Lawrence Castan seemingly realised the struggle to replicate the Death Star's success with a new weapon and so basically didn't even bother. Palpatine really should have known better than to repeat past mistakes, honestly, and it might have been the single daftest thing that he's ever done, which is actually saying a lot. Number 2. Rose Saves Finn now, The Last Jedi does many great daring things, though even its staunchest cheerleaders generally don't have a whole lot to say in defense of the film's ham-fisted romance between Finn and Rose. The problem, ostensibly, is that Rose falling head over heels in love with Finn feels massively forced, considering the compressed time frame of The Last Jedi's story. Within an apparent matter of days, Rose goes from meeting Finn to damn near getting herself killed while preventing him from sacrificing himself in the Resistance's last stand against the First Order, and to cap it all off, Rose then declares her out of nowhere love for Finn in toe curlingly corny fashion, and the two even have a smooch while the carnage kicks off around them. To make Rose's overzealous actions even stranger, they're massively downplayed in both the surrounding novels and The Rise of Skywalker, which more or less treat Rose's selfless act and subsequent kiss like they never even happened. Maybe Rose hit her head really, really hard whilst rescuing Finn, and that's why the kiss happened, but that still doesn't explain why she so enthusiastically risked her own life to save Finn after knowing about him for a hot minute. Rose is most definitely a solid character, but this, or well, this ain't it. And number one, Anakin's Immaculate Conception. The Phantom Menace made numerous odd reveals about various focal Star Wars characters, but most of all that Anakin Skywalker seemingly has no father, and was instead the result of an immaculate conception, as his mother Shmi explains to Qui-Gon. The precise nature of Anakin's parentage has been posited and debated extensively in the years since. Many assume that Anakin was willed into existence by the Force itself, while the 2018 canon comic book Darth Vader number 25 theorizes that he could have been made by Palpatine manipulating the midi-chlorians in Shmi's womb. 
womb. Either way, it is a bizarre complication of Anakin's origin story that nobody really asked for, in turn hammering audiences over the head with the character's already significant stature as a Christ-like figure. And there we go my friends, those were the 10 weirdest decisions in Star Wars history. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.